Hi, this is B Marshall, founder of Yes Parenting. I'm here with Scott Swain, who is an NVC trainer. This is video three in the five part video series on NVC. In this video, I'm about to hand over to Scott, who's going to talk to us about some of the challenges that you might come up against as you begin to develop this practice of NVC. So over to you, Scott, let us know about the challenges. Yeah, so especially for beginners, but really throughout, <laughs> I've been practicing this for 10 years and I continue to run up against challenges and uh, it's worth it. <laughs> um, so uh, in the beginning, I, I remember after having read the book the first time and not having gone to any classes or anything yet, how I would walk away from a conversation and realize, oh, I didn't really use it. I didn't really listen to that person on this deeper level. I didn't really respond empathetically. Instead, I, I did my typical thing of waiting for my turn to speak or giving them reassurance or giving them advice or even being defensive. But that noticing was important because each time I would, I would do a little bit more, the next conversation, or maybe it would take two or three before I would finally do it. I remember being at a party once where uh, somebody was telling me all about some things they'd been doing for the community. And I was silently judging them. I was silently thinking, this person is on board with this conversation. They're being, they're bragging, they need too much of something. I wasn't really, but then I, something clicked and I thought, wait a minute, I've read this book. It seems legit. I wanna practice this thing. So what, so I paused in my own head and I thought, what is this person really asking for as they're telling me about all these things that they've done? And I thought, oh, okay, they want some recognition. And so mm. all I did, and when, I, when I realized that, it shifted something inside of me. But I stopped judging and I just, I suddenly just felt for this person and I was able to really hear them. And I put out my arm, I touched her on the shoulder and I said, wow, I could tell that you do a lot for this community and people just don't notice she just started crying <laughs> and then wow. I started crying. It was really cool. But anyway, let's get back to the challenges. Um, so yeah, one challenge I notice is, you know, no matter how good I get at it, I mean, it gets, this gets better, but I remember sort of in the middle years where I hadn't fully, <laughs> there is no fully, but it, 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 my level of integration where I was, you know, in the beginning, you're sort of faking it until you make it. You're sort of just like, you're guessing, you're, it's, it's, it might be even more in your head at first, where you're just thinking to yourself, what might, and you're going through this vocabulary of needs, and you're wondering, you know, and you're, you're putting it out there, like, is this your need? Is that the need? And they're correcting you, hopefully. This depends on honesty. There's another drawback. Mm -hmm. People aren't always honest, because they might have needs for privacy. They don't want to reveal necessarily what's going on inside them, or even think about it. It's, it can, you know, a need for ease might dictate that, Somebody asks you a question like, um, so were you afraid in that situation because you wanted more safety or you, were you upset because you wanted more respect? And that person might not want to go there. They're not used to going that deep. So it might be just kind of take effort that they don't want to give. And so that can, you can be met with resistance when your intention is maybe number one, to just really understand them and try this thing where it's like, that, um, where you're connecting on a deeper level. But to them, it might be like, hey, why are you talking so weird? Is this psychobabble? Are you manipulating me? Um, so NVC can be easily confused, not all the time. I mean, it really depends on the person you're talking to, of course, but confused for manipulation because they're, mm. they're thinking, oh, you're trying to like establish some kind of connection with me so that you can get me to do what you want me to do, which as I'd mentioned in a previous video, the principles, underlying principles of NVC is we never want somebody to do, to do so well. And to shift this into NVC language, I wouldn't say never. I would say we always want people to do things for their reasons mm -hmm. for or or even if it's our reason like hey would you want to do this because i think it'd be fun well then only if they also would enjoy doing it mm -hmm. and not just to, not just to please us mm -hmm. um so and then now and back to some drawbacks or not really not drawbacks i would say challenges yeah you brought this up earlier mm -hmm. challenges is a great word because um 
in VC. So one of the other challenges I notice is if, you know, while it is meant to be something that you can use to communicate with somebody else who does not have the MVC skills, it can be a challenge when I've seen, I've seen some couples get into it where one person in the couple got into it and the other did not. And the person who got into it tried using it in conflict situations when they weren't really so good at it yet, or they weren't really sticking to the, the rules that in the beginning it's important to. So they would maybe make a demand of their partner, or they would leave out the needs part and just guess feelings, or they would only focus on their own feelings and needs and not try to get what their partner's feeling. So there's many ways it can be used that can actually impact a relationship in the negative. And I've seen mm. that happen. So I think it's really important if a person gets into it and their partner's not into it, that the person, number one, share with their partner, hey, um, we're having a conflict right now. I want to try this thing and I'm not so good at it yet. Please bear with me and just really keep the communication mm. open. Um, you brought in partners, which jogged my memory about something else that you talked to, talked to me about when, when I uh, first discovered NBC through spending time with you. And it applies equally, I think, to our relationship with our children and how we raise our children to have a relationship with others. And that is, if I remember correctly, that within NBC, NBC moves away from compromise and NBC moves away from apology which I, I think both of those are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But I think that they come as challenges to people who are, people who think, you know, compromise is king and, you know, well, I deserve, I deserve an apology or I should give an apology. So would you just talk about these, these briefly, um, but talk about apology and compromise and why NVC moves us away from those things and, and that is a challenge um, but also maybe touch on a little bit actually why that is actually such a good thing. Oh yeah thanks for bringing those up there's just so much here that uh, yeah, yeah so, um, compromise and apology uh, so yeah in our what Marshall Rosenberg the author of NV, the book um, talks he will say sometimes that our culture is a domination culture. So, you know, most of the people that an NVC practitioner is going to encounter are people that are used to and value compromise. And what NVC teaches us is that compromise means people are giving in to uh, not get their needs met or to get their needs met to a lesser degree than they possibly could, where consensus is you know, more like, hey, how about we really talk about what each of our needs are so that we could find something, some strategy to meet our needs. And I'll, I'll go into that in a second so that everybody's needs get met. Now that's not always going to be possible, but to me it is, it is such a beautiful thing to aim for and to strive for. And it may take a few more moments of negotiation, at least initially when, when we're first learning to do this thing. But so now I'll go briefly into what I mean by strategy. And so NVC teaches us to separate out our strategies, the things we do to get needs met. We separate those from actual needs. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, that, that opens up, that frees us and opens up so many possibilities. So I'll give an example. If, um, you know, if a child comes to you and they say, I really want to go to the amusement park. I really want to go to the amusement park. And that's their strategy that they're proposing to get needs met. Mm -hmm. So when we, we, and we might be just, we might get caught up right there in a battle with them over this, you know, this strategy where if we pause and we think, okay, we figure out what the child's needs are underneath that strategy. So the needs probably in that case are play or mm -hmm. adventure or something like that. So when we identify those needs, then we could say, ah, what other strategies will get this need met? Yeah. So that that so it's like, hey, what if we could go here or there or do this instead of this or this? And then and then it also opens up the possibilities for our needs to get met mm -hmm. because we might, we might also have needs for play um, or some other sort of similar or not. And when we 
we look at our needs, their needs, and then and we, when we come down to that level of just this one strategy, this one strategy, and we're butting heads, we come down to the needs, and then there's like all these strategies that open up. And then over here with us, all these, and then there's this overlap. Mm. So it's like, look, there are things we can do that meet both of our needs. Yes. And then, then nobody needs to compromise. Mm -hmm. I love that. In, within Yes Parenting, you know, I talk about finding a yes for everybody because often, and I think this is, you know, this is where permissive parenting has its influence. You know, permissive parenting is always just like, yes, yes, yes to the kids. And actually, you know, within yes parenting, the first yes is to ourselves. And from that place of resourcing ourselves, we're able to, we, we have the resources to find a yes to our kids. So I'm, I talk a lot about like, where is the yes to everybody? And I do this with my boys. I'm like, okay, so I can, I'm, I can hear right now that peep, you really want to be on the PS4. You want to be gaming with your friends. And Joss is sharing with me that he really wants to watch a movie. And, and the way we've got it set up is basically that there's, there's one TV right now. And, and so they're both wanting it. And I'll just say to them, like, how can we find a yes to both of you? And my boys are now 11 and 12. So they're now in a position where they can start, you know, finding out what these yeses are. And they'll, together, they'll come up with different strategies and they throw a strategy, a bit like strategy tennis. You know, it goes backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And then one of them will be like, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, cool. I'm good with that too. And then I'll just check that they both, I, I, I guess my role then is just to make sure that each of them understands the strategy in the same way like there's no miscommunication going on and then and you know and it's beautiful because then they just move forwards and they're both happy and chilled and you know and they strat they they have found a strategy that meets both their needs and it's such an incredible thing and it's so wonderful as a mum to to see you know to see my kids doing that themselves and realizing that you know they don't have to compromise yeah Oh yeah. Wow. I, that's so beautiful to hear. Uh, <laughs> I, I love to hear about kids that age, just, you know, and I think most kids naturally kind of do that if they're not, you know, <laughs> trained by their parents that they need some authority figure to be the referee or, right. you know, um, well, so, and, wow. yeah. And another interesting we're talking of younger children is, you know, when, when you get smaller, you know, small children, like three, four, five year olds who, you know, who don't want to share, share a toy, share the laptop or whatever. And, and often parents will step in and try and negotiate or force the sharing of something. And one of the things that I did with my boys, and I encourage other parents to do this, is just to say to, to the child that doesn't want to share, say, when you're finished with that, would you let us know so that we can have a go? And I mean, it's not full MVC, but letting them know like when you're done with that, would you let me know? So it's like when you've met your need, could you let me know so that we could have a go? And it's so interesting because what generally happens is the child who doesn't want to share the thing will say yes. And 30 seconds later, they'll say, I'm finished now. Whereas when you're in the kind of the sharing battle, they're holding on for dear life because they're then meeting their need fully is being threatened. As soon as you give them the freedom to meet their need fully, it's amazing how quickly that need seems to be met and then they're so willing to hand it over. And, um, and, and I just, I noticed that time and time again, when someone has like a full, a full opportunity to meet their need, that need can often be met really quite quickly. But when they're, when they're working hard at making sure they're getting, you know, their need is going to be met, it often seems like a much bigger thing. And, and that's not just in small children. I, I, I kind of have noticed that in bigger children and, and in adults. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're really wanting to respect and honor your time with these videos. And we did mention apology as one of the challenges that is often experienced within NVC. The fact that NVC moves us away from apology. In order to honor and respect the, your time and the time of these videos, we are going to explore this idea around apology in video number five, which is all about tips and techniques within NVC. 
So we're going to leave you with this video now and we will see you in video four where we're going to be talking about why this is so important and all of the benefits of integrating MVC into the way you communicate with others. So see you in the next video.